Hi, this is Ryan at Rad Ideas with another Easter marketing quick win for your church. Now, in our last time, we talked about the type of content that you're going to share and three things that every communication needs to include. And today we're going to talk about really the next piece, and that is now I've got my content, now I need to think about where am I delivering it and how often. Okay, and There's a couple things you need to think about in terms of making that decision. The first of which is what options are available to me? Where is my church spending time? Where are people that I'm trying to reach spending time? And some options to consider are how you might use your website, how you could use email, how you could use social media, whether it's through posts or even uh, maybe a sponsored post or an ad, how you might even use text messaging if your church has started using that, and what ways you could use print to help influence people to attend. Now, the thing to think about in terms of those four or five ways that you're going to communicate is there is a threshold for people. And what I mean by threshold is it's the number of times they've been touched by a piece of information. And statistically, seven or more touches is what's necessary before someone makes a decision about whether they are going to participate in an event that you are offering. So what you need to think about in terms of those ways you're presenting info is how can we help get people over that line of seven touches in our communications? Because realistically, you and a few people on staff are probably the only ones who are going to see 100% of what you're putting out. The majority of people living busy, crazy lives are going to see 50-60% of what you're sharing. So what we need to think about is how can we calendar things out, how can we plan things out in such a way that we get enough touches for each person across multiple channels. So what I've done, and it's part of today's resource that's available to you, is I've put together a calendar, and it gives you an idea of how you might break your week apart to help make it manageable for you so you know what you need to create, but also make it predictable for the people in your congregation. And what I mean by that is I've essentially said, okay, each day is going to have its own communication purpose. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we might send out a social media post connected to, in this case, Easter, the specific event we're talking about. On Tuesdays, we might send out text messages. On Thursdays, we might send out an all-church email. And what that does for you is a couple things. First of all, for you personally, it just makes it easy to manage. When you sit down to plan, you know exactly what you've got to create for that week. There's no question in your mind. But it also makes it, um, for your congregation, it helps them to understand and begin to anticipate something's going to come from you as a church. And if I haven't seen it, maybe I should go looking for it. So they begin to anticipate what's happening. They think, oh, it's Thursday. I didn't see that email. I should go look for it. Hey, it's Wednesday. There's usually a social media post from the church. Maybe I should look for it. So you begin to develop a couple of things. That is the anticipation on the part of your person in your congregation, but also then the understanding for you that you know exactly what you've got to manage from the project standpoint. So those are some things I've outlined in today's resource is how you're going to share it and a timeline for doing it. And you'll actually find a calendar there. It's all color coded out for you just to help you break it down visually and think through how would I do this. All right. So that's today's quick win for you from Rad Ideas. If you've got any questions, I would love for you to post them here uh, on either the blog or even on the social media feed. And until next time, blessings.